thank you. Um, thank you for having us. Kelvin is a licensed roofing contractor. Uh, we've been doing this for about, what do you say, 20 15 years, um, 20 years now. Yeah, almost, almost 20 years now. So basically, Kelvin, he came from Malaysia. Um, when he came here, it was a little bit of a struggle for him as well. Uh, when he came here, he didn't understand the language. It was, um, he basically just sort of joined in with a roofing company. Um, started off from the bottom, you know, I had a couple jobs here and there, but uh started off just something as simple as cleaning up garbage, you know, cleaning up debris on the job sites. Um, and he just slowly watched and learned and seen how everyone was working. Um, how many years was it that you did that for? That uh, was four years. Uh, so he did, yeah. the, he did that for about four years, mm -hmm. give or take. And he ended up getting encouragement from his boss, actually, who had told him, well, why don't you go and do some of the training? Because with roofing, there's a lot of liabilities. Um, you need your working at heights training certificates so that you can work on the roof. Um, obviously, safety is a huge factor with roofing. Mm -hmm. um, there's the fines are crazy. The Ministry of Labor, they're very strict when it comes to safety compliance. Uh, since roofing is one of the more um, dangerous jobs of all the trades, uh, it's really important to make sure you have all the safety equipment. So Kelvin went and he, uh, he acquired all that proper licensing and he started working up on the roof. And obviously that's a, that's a really big promotion. That's, um, it makes a really big difference. So he did that for about eight years and um, his boss encouraged him, well, you're why don't you uh, open up a company? Um, and so that's that's what Kelvin did. He went and opened up a company. Um, same idea it was a really big struggle in the beginning because you got to find a way to get the customers first, right? And um, just over time, he slowly acquired, you know, a couple customers mm -hmm. here and there and then referrals because the customers would talk to other customers and say, hey, um, this guy did a real why don't you call him and he didn't have much in terms of advertising and then on top of that he was teaching himself english as well so the language barrier was another big issue and then uh, between open though there's a lot more than just acquiring licensing and um the protection training and all of that uh, because you need like proper insurance you need w, uh, municipal licensing on top of it where are you planning on working because it's the entire greater Toronto area. So he goes as far as Milton, Hamilton sometimes, and different municipalities actually require um, different licensing. So he, he got the, um, the master business license, which is supposed to cover all of Ontario, um, but the bylaws do change a little bit. So places like Oakville or Hamilton actually require their own, yeah, their own different specific licensing. Uh, which you have to watch because if the city decides to stop, stop by while you're working, they can shut your entire job site down as well. Um, so slowly, um, he built up the business. We've been running it, like I said, almost uh, 20 years now. Yeah. Um, I joined in with him approximately almost, almost 10 years ago, around 2010, 2011, I joined in with him. Um, and at the time we had what, three, four guys working for yeah, you? We four guys. Yeah, we had about four <laughs> workers. So no, 10, you know. yeah, and now like at this point, he's got 10, 11 workers in total working for him. So it depends on the job though, because some jobs are just little itty bitty houses. You just need um, a couple people working. You don't need a lot of people. Um, and other times we get calls for um, builder developments, new developments, sometimes even like multi-million dollar homes that are gonna take um, in, like the entire day to do even with 10, 11 people, right? <laughs> so he, um, just over time, it, it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of patience. And able to get to where you have a steady work and steady income. Um, and we got to the point where sometimes we do more than a house a day. We're up in the morning at what, five, six o'clock. Um, the hours are pretty crazy sometimes. It can be 15, 16 hours a day. You can be home seven, eight, nine. It depends when the job site is done. Um, it's not always like a clean cut, easy nine to five job, right? Yeah. Um, so you do need uh, a lot of determination and willpower because like I said, roofing, not only is it one of the most dangerous jobs of the trades, um, but also physically demanding as well. Um, 
So it's definitely not for the light of heart. Um, even even something as simple as a, a general laborer, like a guy cleaning up garbage, it's not even that is not an easy job all in its own. It's a hard job. It's a very hard job. We're exposed to the elements. So uh, midsummer, you you guys see go outside in the middle of the summer. It's 30, 40 degrees outside. Well, if you're up on the rooftop and you're two stories up, there's no shade, there's no wind, there's nothing. So you have to take into consideration not only your fall protection, but um, keeping safe from the elements as well. Sunburn is a really big issue. You know what I mean? Skin cancer and things like that. You need to wear long sleeves in the middle of summer, summer to cover yourself up. And if, you, if you're thinking it's 30 degrees on the ground, well, it's when you're sitting on top of hot asphalt on the top of the roof it's probably closer to 40, 40. degrees so it's um it's it's definitely not an easy job uh, it's not for everybody but um it's it is worth it um and i when i joined back with calvin um same idea i'm i'm five feet i'm like 100 pounds tops i'm just that you know I'm a, I'm a small girl and for me to join in with the guys it was quite intimidating, I would say the least. Um, it wasn't my first time joining in with the trade. So uh, when I was younger, I had done some renovation and some painting work as well. Um, I joined the army when I was around 17 or 18 years old. So it, it wasn't my first time working a hard job like this, but even jumping from the army into roofing, I can tell you the roofing is actually probably harder than, than working in the army. <laughs> Oh, do you got that? <laughs> so, make sure you have a good walk on the water, cold water. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> another really big aspect um, when you're working on the roof, it's not just about you and the business, but you do have to take care of your workers as well. Um, some companies are unionized, so union companies, they have mandatory breaks and lunch breaks and things like that. We're, we're not unionized, but we still obviously have to take care of our workers as well. Um, so that boils down to not just the pay grade, but um, he, Kelvin will actually provide breakfast and lunch for the workers as well. Uh, we have ice boxes and everything on site. We have to make sure lots of cool water, heat stroke. Yeah. Um, very big deal um, and not just that uh, providing breaks even you know what I mean getting the guys to come down off of the roof and just sit in the shade for a little bit because you do have to take care of yourself it is like very very physically demanding but I mean the thing is everybody in like everybody is going to need a roof um, we can't all be doctors and lawyers and scientists, you know what I mean? Somebody's got to do some of the, the hard work and the laborious jobs as well. And that's kind of where we step in. So it's uh, it's kind of a big issue working out in the, the sun and the trades and everything. <clears throat> so what else do you got to add? <laughs> There's, it's, it's hard to, to think of everything here. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's pretty pretty straightforward though. Um, we offer everything in terms of uh, not just full replacements of houses, dog sheds. You know what I mean? Be something like that. And sometimes it's like big mansions. Uh, and then not just in the summertime because we aren't. Some companies do shut down in the winter time. Uh, we don't usually shut down, but the work does slow down. Uh, yeah, we'll get from builders, um, tractors, general con. All that's up there, but fours and some I would, and we've got to maneuver our way around that and figure out how to install the materials in cold weather as well. It's not the best idea because the thing is, shingles especially, there's bonding adhesive on the well because not only with the licensing and all of that you have to think it is a huge liability because if you don't install your product properly um, and let's say for example somebody ended up with a leak in their house well that liability is on you and not only uh, is the water traveling through the shingles and the plywood and things like that but once it makes its way into the house your insulation inside your attic is wet your drywall is wet your ceiling is wet and that poses the liabilities you, you've got to figure out how to cover the cost of the inside of the house as well if you mess up or you make any sort of mistakes 
So the proper treating is definitely important. It's one of the, the biggest issues. But the thing is with roofing, there isn't really schooling for it. I mean, there there is some courses and things like that you can take, but roofing is one of those jobs that's a hands-on learning experience. You're going to have to start from the bottom. You're going to have to work your way up slowly one by one and learn from the other people, learn from mentors or people that have been in the trades for a really long time. And then how many bills come on up? I said, well, could come up the bottom. Yeah. And with, with Kelvin's workers is what he's saying. Um, quite a few of him have actually, his his workers over the years that have moved on have actually gone and opened up their own successful businesses as well. He's got about five or six different people. And it's, it's sad to see your workers go. But I mean, everybody needs a, a promotion. Everyone wants mm-hmm. to rise up in the industry. And it, even if you say you jump career choices is great contacts so you can jump from from roofing you can jump to anything to framing to plumbing to engineering to electrical because with roofing we are connected to all the other trades plumbers for instance, uh, you have out through the roof up onto the like through the attic you have to work with other trades as well. Um, so it's not just the roofing that you have to understand. You have to understand how the houses are built inside and outside because we have to work alongside. So not maybe I understand how to install a, a, a plumbing stack, for instance, up on top of the roof. But the plumbing guy, we've got to work in accordance with him and make sure that we understand each other's jobs to that um everything is done properly and at least on uh, like new construction new built homes uh it's not just the shingles like there's a lot of aluminum like flashings and things like that that are incorporated and sometimes we have to take turns with the other trades like the the masonries or the guys that do the stonework we have to maybe go and come back go and come back to the job sites to let the other guys do theirs and we have to understand what their job is and how their job is done so we can do our job properly as well because like I said if our job's not done properly then there's a huge liability there um, and then not just the summertime uh, we do sometimes uh, winter time if work is slowing down we have jumped into renovations before as well renovations are exact same thing I uh, like say complete basement flip overs um, turning it in basements into apartments. There's uh, everything involved in like renovations. You got like a, have to have electrical done. You have to have plumbing done. Um, obviously drywall, painting, sanding, flooring. Uh, and depending on the client or the customer, sometimes they just want basic materials. Sometimes they want uh, fancy upgrades, you know, like those big, beautiful houses inside. And then like say once you're you're done the uh, the framework for the basement, for example, you're going to have to have an electrical guy come in and do all the wiring properly. Um, and then you're going to have to have some, maybe like even a home inspector come in because he's got to come and inspect everything. He's going to have to pass it to make sure everything's in accordance. And if it's not in accordance, then you're going to have to rip everything out and do it again. So that's that's time, that's money. And there's a lot that goes into it in that sense. Um, so with roofing it's it's not just roofing you're you're gonna have to understand everything inside and out and i mean it's it's a progress you don't have to understand everything right away um same idea when i joined kelvin i started off just cleaning up garbage i that's all i did i walked around the house cleaning up debris plastic and nails just keeping an eye on everything yeah, you have to the RA every day. yeah understanding um and then once I got a chance to get up there, same idea, I went and got my fall protection training. And um, once you understand everything inside the attic as well, because like it's not just insulation up there, you know what I mean? There's a lot of pipe work, there's ducts, there's, oh, yeah. And then uh, sometimes uh, when you say, when we're doing a replacement roof for somebody who knows that they had issues, maybe they had previous leaks that were happening and we rip up all the shingles off of the roof, we get a chance to see all the plywood or hardwood that's up there um and sometimes there is surprises on the job site like just uh yesterday actually it was supposed to be quite a, a simple Automate. yeah it was supposed to be a simple easy clean cut job and once we ripped everything up off the roof the entire plywood it was just it was wavy it was black and when you see black up there uh 
that's mold and mold is a really big issue because not only is it damaging the foundations or the structures of the house but um, it poses a health risk as well um, it's especially children pets uh, long-term exposure to breathing in mold that that can play a really big issue and so instead of just a simple um, change why would that day uh, it was pretty much almost almost, <laughs> almost the whole roof um, did as much as we could and sometimes you know we have to work with clients too because clients are on a budget as well um, so we've got to work with them and figure out okay well maybe we can rip up the plywood but that's not going to fix everything because inside the attic your insulation has started changing color the the joists for instance have started changing color um, and you're going to have to get removal specialists, insulation guys to come in, unless that's something that you can incorporate into your business. Sometimes people don't do just roofing. Sometimes it's like uh, roofing and um, insulation, for example, and they can do both for you. Sometimes you have to call in other contractors and work in accordance with them as well. So that's, um, that's another really big the issue uh, we're usually on different job sites every day uh, we average a house or two a day since he's got um, as many workers as he does now we're able to do um, more more than one place in a single day so once we um, once we do that me and Kelvin sometimes have to travel between the job sites because we have to have a job like we have to have a supervisor as well <clears throat> Sorry, um, because the Ministry of Labor, uh, they tend to go on blitzes every once in a while, which means they sometimes just drive around areas where they know um, where the roofs haven't been done yet or they've seen roofs, roofing signs hanging around. And when the Ministry of Labor stops by, uh, they'll tend to take photographs of all the job sites and make sure everything is in accordance. So if you don't have your hard hats on, have safety wires connected to your harnesses, you don't have a um, steel toed shoes, for example, it's that uh, they can pose tickets for each worker. Um, and if they catch you more than 10 feet in the air, I believe that's the bylaw now, anything over 10 feet, um, you have to have an anchor, you have to have harnesses and ropes that connect you to the roof. And if you don't have those, those anchors, you can be fined up to, I, I believe the max fine is around $50,000. Um, and if somebody gets hurt, then that fine can actually go up to a hundred thousand. Um, and yeah, and there's actually the potential for jail time as well for the owner of the company. And that's obviously something you're going to want to avoid because as a small business, it's not going to be easy to pay off a $50 fine and it could potentially bankrupt you like one, one bad slip up and, um, you could easily end your life. Like even if you, like 10 feet may not sound like a lot. Um, but 10 feet can do a lot of damage. So safety is definitely one of the most important things that have happened. And um, even even a step ladder, you got to think even two or three feet on a step ladder, if you fall down the wrong way, you can seriously hurt yourself or injure yourself. Luckily for us, um, we're very adamant with the safety. Uh, so workers, if you if you're not willing to wear the safety equipment I know it's hot and it's uncomfortable and the wires get in your way and it's it's annoying to work with but it's better than losing your life over saving yourself a couple of minutes up there working right so that's that's <laughs> that's a really big issue <laughs> you get a lot of workers that are like well oh I don't know it's uncomfortable and it's 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 hard to wear and it gets in your way and it it digs into India here and it, it's not exactly comfortable equipment to be wearing but it's it's definitely necessary because sometimes the Ministry of Labor, they can just surprise you when they, sometimes they'll actually park down the street while you're working and you, you can't see them because it's unmarked cars. It's usually, it looks like a minivan. It's got a little Ontario logo and they'll, they'll actually park down the street and they will take photos of everything before you, you before you even know that they're there. Um, I've actually seen uh, quite a few companies that it's happened before. I follow sometimes the government newsroom um, and companies just say they, they didn't even know what was happening and some guy with a hard hat shows up to their job site next thing you know it's like thousands of dollars in tickets because the guys decided oh it's just a small bungalow house and they didn't want to wear any equipment and next thing you know they're getting fined <laughs> yeah sometimes it's fifteen thousand, sometimes it's twenty thousand. it's not it's not a small amount um 
and you can, I'm sure you fight, you could take it to court, but when there's photographs up there of you not wearing safety equipment, it's not exactly something you can fight, right? <laughs> yeah, so safety, I would, I would honestly say, yeah, safety is probably the most important thing. Um, obviously, licensing is important. Um, uh, WSIB, because each worker, if somebody does get hurt on the job site, not necessarily there's a lot of other ways you can hurt yourself you can um you can cut yourself with a blade for example when you're cutting shingles you can step on a nail you know what i mean and wsib is there to make sure that your workers are covered if they're off of work if they do get injured in some way and they can't come to work for a little bit um so wsib insurance like property insurance is a really big thing Ooh, <clears throat> um the bylaw now i believe three you're million. i think it's a minimum of three million, three million. Uh, yeah three million that you need for your insurance um because if you damage something on the house for example maybe you're uh, removing a chimney and then the whole chimney decided to collapse you've got to make sure that your your roofing insurance is to cover that cost and now, because houses, like the housing market is kind of ridiculous now. So even just a small basic house is going to cost well over, you know, 900000 a million dollars at like the minimum, right? So you're going to need a couple million to make sure you cover that. Just in case if anything, like maybe even we're just throwing garbage off of the roof, some debris and maybe a, a shingle flew and broke a window or something or the wind caught it the wrong way or you, maybe the homeowner drove over a nail or something like that, right? You, there's a lot of precautions you have to take as well. So that's, um, that's obviously what insurance is meant to cover. Um, they, the fall protection training is um, a little bit different now. It used to be very easy to acquire. Um, you just basically did an online test and they would hand it out like they handed out candy back in the day. Now you actually have to go in and it's a, it's a, yeah, I think it's an eight hour class now. Um, you basically sit through videos and lectures of the importance of safety, um, what happens if you don't wear safety and then you have to do a test like putting on your, um, your harnesses and connecting your, your safety wires and everything like that. And once you pass everything, um, they give you your safety certificate card that you have to keep on, like on you at all times. Um, just in case, like I said, if the Ministry of Labor shows up, you want to have that card handy to show them, hey, the guys were trained because that's, um, uh, it, let's say, you're in your safety equipment, one ticket. If you don't have a safety card, that's another ticket. Like they, they break it down into sections like that. So it, it can add up quickly if you're not following the rules, right? It's um, kind of a big issue now. Yeah. <laughs> Um, even sometimes too, uh, we do, we don't just do shingle roofing. We sometimes do a little bit of flat roofing as well. Um, sometimes with flat roofing, you actually have to set up guardrails around because it's, it's flat. So you're not, you don't, you have still have the potential to fall down. Um, but it's more or less going over a ledge. Uh, sometimes there's skylights up there. If you're replacing a skylight and someone's not paying attention, you can fall down into a hole. Um, the last, I think it was two years ago, I read on the newsroom um, that somebody was backing up and they didn't, there was no guardrail around. And the man had actually fallen down through the skylight hole and landed inside the building. Um, he was in the hospital for quite a while and I think he actually fell victim to his injuries and it's you gotta your heart goes out to their their family the friends the company as well you know what I mean so it's I would say safety is probably the most important thing yeah. and then because they have the insurance <clears throat> and yeah and then uh, especially with flat roofing the the insurance is a little bit different it's higher um, because of like the liabilities, it's not nailing and shingling. You're actually working with propane uh, torches. It's um, like, yeah, it's a different type of insurance. So um, since it's a higher liability, obviously it's probably more, it's more expensive, but um, <clears throat> like you're, you just have to take other types of precautions, um, like wearing the proper like fireproof gloves and things like that as well, because it's very, very easy when you're sitting there holding a torch that's almost like a flamethrower to, to accidentally burn something or somebody. And then what happens if the, the propane disconnects and a flame catches it or something like that? You don't want to have an, an explosion or something happening up on the roof, right? So Um, <laughs> uh, 
Um, so does anybody have any questions for us or? I mean, English better for me. <laughs> Kelvin's a little bit nervous of talking. Um, he, <clears throat> he, he speaks English perfectly fine, but he just has a very, he has a, a heavy accent. So he gets a little bit nervous when it comes to, to speaking and talking, but um, especially when we go out to do estimates like that we have to go and meet with groups <laughs> yeah specifically request kelvin he'll go but he as much as he can he encourages me to do the the talking for him so we can explain the materials and the the, the warranties and things like that that go along with it okay um let me start um with the question so for those people who want to enter this industry what should they do as their first step uh the first step i would find another reputable um roofing company um and i would ask just to start off as a first goes um companies are all in favor. Uh, can always have an extra set of hands on the job something as simple as um, cleaning up around the the job site you know any cleaning up the garbage the debris collecting nails and everything like that yeah <laughs> Be, uh, being a feeder um because we mean obviously the guys that can roof all the time if you have zero experience and you've never done anything in this sort of trade all you got to do is just call up any um any roofing company and just say hey do you need an extra set of hands i'd like to learn how this is done mm -hmm. do that for maybe a couple of years or see how fast you advance it really depends on the person <coughs> and the company Make sure you have to be careful with the roof or how with the other side yeah and then finding make sure it's a reputable reputable roofing company because you want to make sure that they have w end up in the company that's like one of those fly by they open up a business and they um maybe do bad work or maybe they just they are offering really you low quality fine, materials man. that sort of thing you don't you don't want to end up with a bad company that's just going to disappear down the road because you might get caught up in um whatever's happening there right <laughs> thank you so we got a question for calvin is roofing a passion for you or just a job you really love roofing or is it just like a, yeah. or is it just a basic job for you no i'm sure i love roofing yeah 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 he he really does love roofing it is a passion for him as well um he got held in a, in a custom, um, he, he enjoys how he said everybody needs a roof um every building every house every everybody's a roof it's something that's not going to go away um and sort of the, what he's like saying is the feeling of accomplishment i think at the end of the day um when you finish up that job site and you see that entire roof has been replaced and done and it, it gives you a really good feeling you know like i did that yeah. i finished that house right and when you have a satisfied clients and they really appreciate your work as well and they're like thank you so much for helping me and like because sometimes he'll even tell customers hey there's other problems or he'll address other things to the clients as well that maybe they didn't know about and they're like you could have easily just finished your job and went home but you went the extra mile and you let me know that something was wrong or that there was another issue and he really likes that sense of accomplishment and I think I think I know it too because even on our days when we're not working and we're off Kelvin's like I'm so bored we need like we got to find something to do he can't just sit still and not do something even on our days off it's like well, let's go see some customers or let's go uh, get some estimates done or you know what I mean <laughs> it's always something roofing related that's cool. Um, in instead of just the satisfaction, how much do do we like usually get paid for in like in the beginning of our job? Uh, beginning jobs, starting pay. Eighteen dollar hour. Uh, yeah, starting pay even just as a garbage guy, you can actually make around eighteen dollars an hour. Um, mind you, the hours are pretty long too. Um me and Calvin mm -hmm. are usually out the door by about six o'clock. Um, we're home around dinner time. So sometimes the hours can be anywhere from 10 to 15 hours a day. You know what I mean? Sometimes more. Hours. Yeah, usually it averages about 10 hours, but some of those really long days. Um, and then once you, once you actually upgrade 
grade um, and say you learned a little bit more and you want to start using the nail gun and you want to be an installer, um, starting pay for an, an inexperienced installer would be maybe $25, 25 yeah, maybe about $25, $30 an hour. Um, really depends on your level of expertise. Okay, cool. So what about after you get the license, like experiences, after you get promoted? So um, what can we get, how much can we get for the um, like An experienced installer, somebody who's been doing it for a long time and does really good work, um, you can make like 30, 35, 35 yeah, about $35, yeah, 35 an hour. Yeah. Uh, depends on the company. Obviously, each company yeah. pays differently. Um, so you, the more reputable the company it is, uh, the more likely you're going to <laughs> you don't want to get paid pennies for how hard the job is, but yeah, you can make you can make thirty five. I've heard of some companies even paying up to forty dollars an hour. Um, yeah, worker for like about eight, ten years. Yeah, most of his workers have been working with him for about eight to ten years. We don't hire part time people. Like once you work with us, you're working with us, and if you want to stay, you can stay. Right? We don't like to have guys like come and go. So we like to be them to be familiar with their jobs it's like a like a well-oiled machine as soon as we get to a job site this guy goes here this guy goes here and everybody knows what their job is um so same same idea cool so i think amanda has been helping calvin a lot since she joined so what's the advantage just to like for having her in your team why do you like having me here how do i help you <laughs> I'll push you everything on myself first, and then you easy to talk to him. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he's taught me a lot over the years. I, I would consider him my, my, he first started materials and things like that. Um, and then once he was able to do that, um, like easy helping the job site. it was easy for him to stay at the job sites and help the workers while I could go and deal with the clients and do the more uh, administrative aspect of the job mm. um so i wouldn't be scared to talk to customers or um like because i knew what i was talking about right and i sometimes i'd go to job sites and they would think hey uh she's just the sales lady or whatever and then they're like right surprise when me and calvin both show up and they say that's great that the boss is actually there on site it's not like one of those big companies where you're just sending random teams in like calvin's always present he's always there to watch watch over the entire job right mm -hmm. Learn, you learn everything. Uh, and so once he um, once he taught me how everything was done, we uh, yeah. once so once we teamed up together, like we we doubled the business within the next year or two. You know what I mean? It was we made a really big difference. So we we make a good team. <laughs> wow, that sounds like a good teamwork. So Amanda, I think I think it's not easy to work in an industry that is dominated by male. So what motivates you in this career? Um, I've always really enjoyed the physical aspect. I don't think I'd be able to work a job behind a computer or a desk. I think it would just bore me. Um, it, like I said, it wasn't my first time working in the male dominated industry, but like times, times are changing now. It's 2021. Um, I run into women sometimes. I haven't met another girl roofer yet. I would like to, <laughs> um, but I've seen them work renovations and things like that because I think right now only 4% of uh, people working in the trades are women and that that is slowly growing. I'd like to see it grow a little bit more because there's the, you know, girl power, <laughs> like girls can do anything that the men can do too. And a lot of them are a little bit intimidated of jumping in and giving it a go, but you, you don't need to get to try. Worst comes to worst. If you don't, if you don't like it, then you can move on to the next career choice. It's not something, it's not set in stone, right? You can, you can build yourself up to to what needs to be done you can start off at the bottom you know what i mean you can do some of the easy stuff first and you can work your way up from there there's no no reason to be scared of working with men 